I am Soham Kulkarni, Sergeant at Sergeant at Arms for today's meeting. I welcome you all to the 684th chapter meeting of Toastmasters Club of Pune. The mission of the Toastmasters Club is to provide a supportive and positive learning experience in which members are empowered to develop communication and leadership skills, resulting in greater self confidence. and personal growth now let me explain some basic rules of the meeting please put all the noise making devices on silent mode i request all the online attendees to mute yourself when you are not speaking in toastmasters meeting we shake hands when we transfer control please clap whenever control is transferred requesting all the role players speakers who are attending online to rename themselves as role underscore underscore name i will give you example my role is sergeant and arms so i have named myself as saa underscore soham guests can rename themselves as guest underscore name please follow the following protocol mr president toast master of the day fellow toastmasters and guests we will now have a round of guest introduction i request each guest to tell their name profession and how they came to know about toastmasters all in 15 seconds do we have any guest uh, distinguished toastmaster nagapan sir yes 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 we have guest uh, Okay. Yes. Please state your name, profession, and how you came to know about our course. All in all. Hi, my name is Anish. I am the person who is going to teach you some of the subjects. And I always talk about the course. What is your name again? Anish. Okay. 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 Yeah, so my name is Sarjani. So I am in uh, last stage like student. So all post masters to present the session. Which are the online guests? Uh, we have one online guest. Guest Uttarsh Pordhi. Hi. Uh. Shall I just give my quick introduction? Yes, please. Hi, my name is uh, Utkarsh. I am currently working as a business analyst at Geo Haptics, uh, which is a company based out of Mumbai. Introduce yourself, please, Utkarsh Khodke. Hi, hi, yes. Uh, hi, my name is Utkarsh. Uh, I am currently working as a business analyst at uh, Geo Haptics, which is a company based out of Mumbai, and. Uh, the first time i heard about toastmasters was way back in 2018 but i just uh, you know couldn't get around uh, knowing more about it a uh, couple of weeks ago i visited the website and then i you know thought about just knowing more about this and that's how i'm here thank you thank you i can't hear anything on this so it's not working on my pc Uh, can we move ahead are we done with all the guests uh, i guess you yeah, are done with all the guests we may now call the pmod okay moving ahead with the agenda please help me welcome our toast master of the day toast master ankita dev over to you toast master of the day Hello, Toastmasters and dear guests. Welcome to another exciting program of fun and learning at another at the six eighty fourth chapter meeting of Toastmasters Club of Pune. I am Ankita Dev, your host for this evening. 
Today, the format for this meeting is a little bit different and interesting because this won't be a usual meeting. It's a speakathon. The third theme we decided for this evening. We had actually six speakers, but due to unforeseen circumstances, we missed out two. So, uh, we, uh, without further ado, let me explain the program for today for the benefit of our guest. We have two sessions. The first half will consist of four prepared speeches, and the second half will consist of table topics. So speakers will attempt to deliver their speeches based on certain objectives during the first phase. These speeches will be later evaluated by senior members who will give their feedbacks. The second half will be for impromptu speaking, in which you will learn how to think fast and speak off the cuff. I will now invite someone who is the founder of Toastmasters Movement in Pune and is our current president. Professionally, he is a corporate trainer and an economist. He has served in all positions at the club and district level, starting from club sergeant at arms to district governor during 27 years of his membership at Toastmasters. He led 5,000 plus Toastmasters across 212 clubs of District 41 as district governor for 2013-14. In layman's language, he was all India head. He has traveled to 630 cities in 56 countries across all the continents and speaks a dozen languages. He's also the founder of Toastmasters Club of Pune and led it to 22 uh, since the first meeting in 2007. He came back to lead the club when situation demanded that due to pandemic. Let us welcome distinguished Toastmaster Prasad Sobhi. Am I audible and visible? Yes. People here as well as people in the virtual world? Yes. Good evening everyone once again and welcome to another meeting with slightly different format of the room. We have modified this from the previous meetings at the same place to see whether this is more impactful. So please give us your feedback at the end of the meeting whether you like this format or you would like to go back to the old format which we had for the previous week. There are some more changes that we have adopted and these are all superficial changes, I would say, about the structure of the agenda and the feedback form that we have received. All of you would have received something like this. There are four speakers, so you will write feedback for them, each of them. And when you vote, you will tear out the portion from the bottom, best speaker, best evaluator, best topic speaker, and so on. So we have made it user friendly, try to use it, and give us feedback whether the space is sufficient for you. We have divided one paper into three. If you feel it is too less, we can divide it into two and have the same format, but with wider screen here. Friends, we have started these meetings in person since last few months. We were having limited meetings. Now, with response from the audience, from the general public, as well as our members, we'd like to have more meetings in person. So out of four meetings in a month, maybe all four will be hybrid, or at least three will be hybrid and one can be online. But to do that, the rates have gone up since we stopped for pandemic. So I seek your approval for spending money, which was saved during the pandemic, as well as prior to that, to spend on the present meetings, or we have to increase this week. We have to do one of these two things. So we'll need to ask you at the end of this meeting in the business section, your approval for spending money, more money for rent of the venue, as well as rent of equipment, fellowship, and so on. Or we'll have to increase speed. We'll have to do either, either of these two things, spend from the past or collect more for future. It cannot be that we spend more earn less and still everything is okay. We'll have to spend it from somewhere. So we seek your approval for, approval for that. The other thing we seek your approval for is we normally have a system where one member does not give two speeches back to back. 
we are expected to have something in between. So, for example, Akash is giving a speech today. Next meeting, he will play some role. And the meeting after that, he can give a speech again. But when the club requires something, for example, Rabin and I here require to give more speeches by 15th April so that the club can get an award called Diamond Club Award. I can go all over the world and give speeches, but Rabin is a candidate in the district elections and he cannot do that. So he will have to give speeches only within our club. So we seek your approval at the end again for that to change slightly, allow him to give multiple speeches back to back. And then he will play roles after 15th April. We will talk about that towards the business end of the meeting. But today we have some guests amongst us here. Let them enjoy the meeting. Let them understand it. We'll seek your feedback after the meeting is over. And we have fellowship again of fruits this time. So please join us for that at the end of the meeting. But for today, enjoy whatever you witness. Grasp whatever you can. Learn from that. And tell us at the end how you like this format. With that, I hand you over back to Postmaster today. Thank you, President Sir, for your address. Let me introduce my fellow colleagues who will help me in the control and conduct of this meeting. To maintain order in the meeting, we have someone. He likes coding, reading books, and enjoys drinking. He is Sergeant at Arms, Toastmaster, Sohak Kulkarni. Time, we have a person who is executive assistant in Wipro. Her hobbies are reading, traveling. She is also currently learning Kathak. She is Toastmaster Shantala Venkatesh. <laughs> Again, to keep a track of time but in virtual mode, we have a software engineer by profession and passionate about solving the real world problems. She is Toastmaster Sakshi Pandey. <laughs> to keep track of causes of fillers that we use, we have a software developer and embracing herself for an MBA. She likes to play sports. She is our counter TMDB. <laughs> to give us a critical feedback of the language that we use, and highlight upon the good and not so good usage of English. We have a motivational speaker. Her hobbies are reading and listening to music. Let us welcome Toastmasters Tamanna. Word of the day and idiom of the day. Good evening, all. Good evening. I am Tamanna Ahuja, the language evaluator for today. I will now introduce the word of the day and freedom of the day. The word of the day is ablaze. It means very brightly colored or lighted. An example which can, I'll give you an example in a sentence we can use it. Streets are ablaze with colors after Holi. Would anyone like to use it? Shari. On festivals, we always uh, like to wear blue streets. Thank you. Now, the idea of the day is call it a day. It means to stop working on something and plan to pick it up again later. An example of how it can be used in a sentence would be after working for three hours on her science fair project, Sophia decided to call it a day. Shantala, would you like to use it? After a day long work, I decided to call it a day. Thank you. In Toastmasters, we encourage all the speakers who use the word of the day or idiom of the day by giving them a thumbs up. Be sure thumbs up when somebody uses the word of the day or idiom of the day. I'll be noting down the good uses, uses of the English language and the words or phrases which could have been replaced by better alternatives. I will present my report at the end of the meeting. 
Thank you, Postmaster Kamanna. Someone else will be observing every single thing that will happen tonight. Later, that person will give us feedback about the proceedings, the environment, and general comments. To act as a general evaluator, we have a graduate in microbiology. He loves to play football and cricket. He is Toastmaster Tej. Coming to the agenda, the first half consists of four prepared speeches from the Pathways program. Each speech has specific time limit and certain fixed objectives. That's why we call it a project. Each project teaches us some aspects of public speech, speaking, such as body language or vocal variety or persuasive skills. There are many such aspects that these speakers will try to develop and excel at. Our first speech, the first speaker will attempt his level one, project one, icebreaker from persuasive influency mastery path. The evaluator for the speech is Toastmaster Shweta Sinha. Time allowed is four to six minutes, meaning the lightning sequence is green at four minutes, yellow. Yellow at five minutes and red at six minutes. The buzzer will sound at six and a half minutes. The title of speech is about myself. The speaker is a businessman in steel trading and his hobbies are playing tennis and reading books. Let us welcome Toastmaster Drew. <laughs> Good evening, Toastmaster Ankita and fellow Toastmasters. Very happy to be speaking here. I'd just like to confirm if I'm audible and um, the internet is working fine. Yes, yes. I'll begin with a little bit about myself. I have an in-depth knowledge of the steel market in India as I've been in this sector for over 10 years now and we have a manufacturing unit in Bosri MIDC. Apart from that, I am an avid reader and I'll, I'm, I'm loving all sports. Currently, I've, I'm interested in tennis and swimming. I have joined Toastmasters to meet new people and expand my horizons in terms of personality development and improving networking skills and to directly apply what I learn here in my day-to-day -day business in terms of negotiation skills with customers and motivating our employees. Also, also, I've joined Toastmasters as a way of improving my persuasive skills, which is the pathway I've chosen. Sports has always been a main theme of my day-to-day uh, -day life. From childhood, I had been, I've been playing cricket. Um, I had played cricket for the Maharashtra level for over two years, um, during which I had faced various injuries so that I had to stop that uh, and I had to look for other sports to play. One sport that I really liked and uh, picked up was skiing, where I, which I learned in Gulmarg at uh, the Jawaharlal Nehru Institute of Skiing. So um, after playing for, after skiing for two years, I had been able to play and participate in the state level contest and I'm really proud of that achievement because it was a very challenging and inhospitable environment where it was about minus 20 degrees Celsius over a period of weeks and months. So that was a main uh, achievement recently. Apart from that, uh, our business is in related to steel and manufacturing, which is also uh, currently ch very challenging in terms of uh, rates and uh, customer credit. We have overgrown this in by adding technology and making sure that our customers get the best level of satisfaction. I've tried to make this speech as a starting level and uh, I hope that I can 
get better with your help and support and thank you thank you Let us pause for 30 seconds to write feedback for the speaker. The second speaker will attempt his level one project two from leadership development path. Evaluator for the speech is Toastmaster Pavel de Guni. Time allowed is five to seven minutes, meaning the lightning sequence is green at five minutes. Yellow at six minutes. And red at seven minutes. The buzzer will sound at 7.5 minutes. The title of the speech is Few Thoughts About Humanity. The speaker is a game developer and management enthusiast. He likes reading, writing and gaming. Let us welcome Toastmaster Akash Bhojraj. Honorable President, <clears throat> Toastmaster of the day, fellow Toastmasters and guests. What makes us human? We as humans have developed brains. We can comprehend thoughts. We can invent new things. We can create something which we have never created before. And that is amazing. We have this ability to comprehend, ability to understand thoughts, ability to understand each other's emotions. And that makes us completely different. But don't you think one day in a scenario where aliens first come down to Earth, just imagine, hello, I am Spock. This is area 21. I am here at date something. Hello, human. Hello, Earthling. So when you see it like that, they don't call us, they don't care if uh, you are in USA, you are in UK, or you are in England or India. For them, it's just Earth. Then why are we, for the name of God, divided into these countries where every country has a specific demand, every country has a specific type of people? We don't need this. I think it's time we look at the bigger picture. As an alien, you won't care in which city or which town you land in. For you, that one person or that one guy is just an earthling. An earthling who is just a human. And the aliens don't care if you are from a specific uh, gender or specific ethnicity or specific caste or anything like that. For them, you are human. Then why are we dividing these type of uh, these, these lines? Why are we drawing these lines? You know, it really begs the question, why do we need passports? If I want to go and reach to other country, why the hell do I, do I need to purchase a ticket and then show the passport, show that my identity is this, I'm of an Indian descent, I'm of something else. Why do we need this? I think it's time we comprehend that these borders we have created are nothing but a fragment of our imagination. We don't need these borders. We just need to, we need to the opportunity to go anywhere, everywhere without any restrictions. And that's why I'm to propose something very radical. 
Some of you might not agree with me, some of you might agree with me. But I propose a world government where there is no requirement of that you have to be of a particular ethnicity, you have to be a particular caste or particular creed. It's just world government where if I have a surplus and the other country doesn't have it, I'll provide it to them. Of course, everybody will work. Everybody, it's a hard working government. Everybody will work for their brains. Everybody will work for their time. But just because I have a lot of surplus things I want to provide to the other countries, I think that is ridiculous. It begs the feeling that we are on earth, are divided into these structures where the third world country is pathetic. We don't care about it. And the first world countries will have everything. So the specific governments I, I'm talking about, like US, UK, or any governments, they just look at them, their own people. And they don't care if a town just beside them is starving or they don't have any grades. So this is, if we want to sustain ourselves in the future, we need, we need to have a government which is all inclusive and not just governments who want their petty thing for a one inch or square of land and then we are fighting with each other. And we need to rise above these issues where if that person is fighting, then okay, we have to counter these things. That topple governments make the person, I feel favorable to be the person who is in charge of that specific country. I mean, these type of things won't work at all in the future. And we should try to think about it right now because right now what I'm seeing is there's a lot of confrontations going on. Take an example of Ukraine. It's just, it's just horrific where there is a, even like I like to give a personal example. My colleagues in Ukraine who I, I talk every day because we, we are friends, they are completely offline. And we like, we are in a, in a company, in the same company where there is teams. So you can see what, is, what the hell is happening. And now for the past three to six months, that profile of that person is completely offline. And we don't know if he's alive, he's dead, I don't know. I mean, and the agony and the kind of emotion I'm going through, I mean, it is really horrendous. That's why we need to have a world government. And you know, you must have seen dashboards, you know, every company has a dashboard of something where uh, they, uh, we, we have gauges where how many grains were created, how many things were, uh, what is the productivity of a special, that specific uh, company. We need that, that dashboard for the earth. We need earth dashboard. Where, for example, there's a deforestation going on in a country called Africa. Then we put more uh, grains, we, put, we create more forest in India. And you know, we balance the things out because that's the way to go. I'm sure many things, many times, uh, some progeny or some future generation will, will be thinking, why the hell did these people did come together when it was the only way to save Earth? And remember, just remember, we are the one, one same Earth. Like UK is not in some different area or different galaxy where they don't care what's happening in India or they don't care. So that's not the, that is not what is happening. We need to make sure that every single country come together and form a world government where every single countries are included in it. They don't care which, or which country you are and it is all inclusive. And for the people, you know, I feel that that is the way to go if we have to survive in this galaxy, in this earth. Else, I'm sorry to say, we are in for a high, high extinction. And I think so. We might be getting close to extinction if we don't do this. That's all I'd like to say. I'll call it a day. Thank you so much. Thank you, Toastmaster Akash. Our third speaker will attempt level one, project three from leadership development part. Evaluator for this speech is Toastmaster Kushali Jain. Timing sequence is same as the previous speech. The title of the speech is EQ. The speaker is a person who meditates every day, loves cycling, reading, and trekking. 
Let us welcome Toastmaster Priyanka. Am I audible and visible? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. President, Toastmaster of the day, fellow Toastmasters and guests. We are dangerous when we are not conscious of our responsibility for how we behave, think, and feel. Have you ever been in a situation when someone or somebody triggered a negative emotions or reactions in you? If yes, it's not just you, and this is what I want to explore along with you today. Has anyone ever heard of the term emotional intelligence? I'm sure few have. So let me define what emotional intelligence is. Emotional intelligence is our ability to perceive, manage, and regulate our emotions. Or to put it in simple terms, emotional intelligence is our ability to behave better and to react better. Now, how do I behave better and I react better? I have a simple trick, not a great one, but let me share with you anyway. If I'm in a situation where I'm provoked by somebody, I picture myself climbing up the ladder and that person barking at me. And I ask myself a question, Priyanka, what do you want to do? Do you want to bark back at that person or you want to climb up the ladder? And most of the time with a big smile, I choose climbing up the ladder. This is my own personal trick to handle my emotions. Now, again, this is not a recommendation to anyone, but these are the small tricks which can make us keep balanced in those situations where we need. Ideally, emotional intelligence has five components, self-awareness, self-management, motivation, empathy, and relationship management. But considering the time, I'm gonna focus only the, on the first two, self-awareness and self-management. Now coming to what exactly self-awareness is. Now self-awareness is our ability to recognize our emotions, emotional triggers, strengths, weaknesses, values, goals, motivations, and to understand how it affects our thoughts and our behaviors. So if you ever been in a situation where you are triggered and not necessarily in that particular moment, but maybe in hindsight later, you understood that you were triggered by something. That is self-awareness. So you are self-awareness, but to what extent is the question? For me, it does not take any earth-shaking event to lose me, my temper, or to unsettle me. Maybe that's true for most of you as well. Now, how do I take care of it? So. For me, I know that when I'm hungry, I feel irritated. And for me to recognize when I'm hungry, it's a bit tricky, I don't understand. But if out of blue, I've started getting agitated, I go and grab something to eat because that's my first sign and clue that I'm getting, uh, I'm getting agitated and I need to eat something. It might be because of my hunger. Or to the other extreme, I know a person whose face or even the mere mention of name can unsettle me. And I haven't figured out any solution for that, but I try my best to be conscious in the situations and places where I'm about to encounter that person. I remind myself to behave better, to not to be provoked. And that takes me to the second step of self-management, how to handle it. So self-management is our ability to regulate our emotions. Everyone, including those who have a high EQ, experience some kind of bad moods, impulses, and negative emotions like stress and anger. And self-management is our ability to control those emotions rather than being controlled by those emotions. Negative emotions not only impact people around you, but it can take a toll on your well-being too. We need to find out some ways 
to keep us balanced personally for me my regular meditation helps me greatly to keep myself balanced i have seen others who indulge themselves in hobbies like sports music yoga these all can serve as our regular dose of sanity one should know when to display their emotions and when to delay their emotions we all must have heard that mind is a wonderful servant but a terrible master with this i want to emphasize that it's a time for us to pay equal attention to our eqs along with our iqs to be a bit conscious and try to be a mindful human beings because these negative emotions can impact you as well as the well-being of people around you thank you and over to you toast master of the day thank you toast master priyanka let's pause for 30 seconds and write feedback A fourth speaker will attempt his level one project three from researching and presentation part. Evaluator for the speech is Toastmaster Lakshmi Nair. Timing sequence would be same as that of previous speech. The title of the speech is the man who prevented World War Three. The speaker is past president of Toastmasters Club of Pune, a Toastmaster for seven years, and currently. the coo of drink water daily he loves reading traveling and practicing meditation let us welcome toast master ravin shetty people online can see people here Yeah. Yes, show that you will be seen here anyway. Okay, so next slide. Just click the down button. Down button. Uh, hello. Am I audible and visible online? Yep. Yeah, yeah, audible. Okay. Mr. President, Toastmaster, the fellow Toastmasters, and all the guests present here. Have you heard the name of Stanislav Petrov? Yeah. Yeah. Some of us have. Most of us, most of us haven't. The man who saved the world. Who is this guy? what kind of power was this guy wielding so much so that he had the power to save the world next time and for that i have to give you a little prelude
to the incident that made him famous. So first of all, it was the peak of the Cold War. You know, for 44 years, Russia and America was like, I'm better than you. No, I'm better than you. And I'm better than you. So there were, you know, at loggerheads with each other, not face to face, but in proxy wars in other countries. And they are having some kind of ideological wars, forming alliances, psychological warfare, espionage, technological wars, space wars, unending list. But mainly, they are trying to be a better nuclear superpower than we are. And towards the heat, uh, towards the 80s, the heat of this Cold War had increased to a level where the whole world was scared. Is there going to be a nuclear World War III? And at this point, it had seemed almost inevitable. There was one incident where the Russian nuclear spy submarine was close to attacking four to five USA naval ships who were unaware that the submarine was nuclear. Next. There was a Korean Airlines uh, plane that was shot down by the Soviet Union. Reason being that it was flying in a no-fly zone, especially in a sensitive area like a nuclear submarine base, Air Force base, and nuclear testing point. Now, why that plane went over there, we don't know. But the Soviets thought that is a US spy plane and blew it up, also blowing up all the 269 passengers on that plane. So you understand that any one minute mistake, not just by US or Russia, even by the Allies, could have blown things to catastrophic proportions. So obviously, nuclear war, war was inevitable. So now who was Stanislav Petrov? He was a lieutenant colonel in the Soviet Air Defense Forces. And he had studied radio engineering at the Air Force Base in Kiev. He eventually joined the Air Force, rose through the ranks, and was very, had become very successful. He was placed on duty at one of uh, the command centers called Serpukov 15 near Moscow. And that's a command center for the Soviet early warning satellites. So basically what these satellites do is, it's somewhere up there near America, it can see some missiles going. So it will transmit that data to a receiver, like a disk TV. And how a disk TV converts the information into what we see on a TV. Similarly, in the command center, it will show that information on computer screens or whatever sophisticated machinery that they have. So the duty of Petrov was to observe, observe this satellite early warning network and notify the superiors of any impending nuclear missile attack against the Soviet Union. And if the notification was received in such a situation that any inbound missile is coming towards the Soviet Union, the strategy was immediate and compulsory nuclear counter attack against the United States, launch on war. That was it. All out. Now, on the day of the incident, on 26 September 1983, when Petrov early, early in the morning has arrived at his station for duty and the warning system is blaring because it had detected an intercontinental ballistic missile from the US airbase. And the alarm started ringing. And the red warning sign kept on flashing in front of him. Now, I'd be you know, sweating like anything in such a situation. A few minutes later, it shot four more missiles. In a matter of five minutes, this is what is happening. And this time, the warning system, instead of a launch, is saying you just strike. Just launch a mass strike on the USA. Next slide. So as you can see, oh, you cannot see it very clearly. But the first image shows one missile. And after five minutes, it shows up there are five missiles on the radar. the radar right now. Next slide. Now, Petrov was a very critical link in the decision-making process in case of a nuclear strike from the US. Because, and another thing was, there was no rule or protocol in place to decide whether this it is a fake alarm or not. It all depended on Petrov. So if he were to receive a warning, if he feels that it is the right alarm, he will have to inform his seniors. And then later on, after that, the decision is out of his hands. His seniors will straight away launch a nuclear war. Now, for some reason, Petrov was not able to get himself to pick up the phone because he was very skeptical about the system, the very system that he was working with. He was a smart man. He knew the consequences of his decisions. 
the consequences of a large scale nuclear war or not. But if you are not to not take any action also, he would be putting his country at risk. And it's a very difficult decision for him to take. Then finally, after four, five minutes, he decided that it may be a false alarm. And he informed his, uh, his uh, superiors about it. And after which no action was taken. But then, you know, he's still waiting to probably be dead. He and his uh, superiors and his juniors all waiting probably to be dead because this fellow is saying it is a false alarm. Now, just to confirm that it was the right decision or not, he waited for like 25 minutes because, you know, any failure could lead to death of millions anyway. And he is sitting in the sea of his conflicting thoughts. Is this what is happening? Is this, you know, is it really going to happen next time? But then finally, he calmed down and he was like, okay, it's been half an hour now. I'm alive. Everyone's alive. So it was a false alarm. Now, what exactly happened was now Petrov was, you know, he, he was a radio engineer and he knew that the system used was very primitive and it had a lot of problems in it. He also knew that the programmers who had worked on the satellite had not put in the code properly, due to which, even if we were to give up the right alarm or false alarm, we are not to trust it. He was of the opinion that humans who have created machines are far more. Uh, you know, reliable than the actual machine itself. So what had happened was, there was an unusual alignment of clouds in the sky. And then the way the sunlight was detecting of the clouds made the satellite think that there was a ballistic missile attack on the Soviet Union. He also believed that if the USA were to wage a nuclear war, they would not send one, two, three, four, five missiles. It would be a full-blown attack. So he, he also knew the dynamics of the situation, but very risky decision that he took. And next, what could have happened had he, you know, taken the wrong approach, you know, had he said that this is a real alarm, if the alarm is true, that could have blown into a nuclear war. But it was only because of his skeptical mind and his civilian training that made him effective to react in such a situation. Because probably someone in this case would have demanded a nuclear strike on the US. The US would have immediately lost 35 to 77 percent of its population. Soviet Union would have lost 20 to 40 percent of its population immediately. Thus, also triggering their allies to get involved. Thus, on World War III, a nuclear war, which would have caused irreversible damage of ginormous proportions on the Earth. Now, what happened after that situation was the aftermath. Petrov was initially praised for keeping his cool and later was investigated. And during the interrogation, they asked him, you know, during the war, you're supposed to maintain a logbook. Why didn't you maintain a logbook? So very famously, he replied, I had a phone in one hand, I had an intercom in my other hand, and I didn't have a third. He had earlier pointed out a lot of bugs in the system and his seniors decided to ignore him. So it was a matter of ego for them also. It was a matter of ego because, you know, they knew that they were wrong and he was right and they didn't want to really reward him for it. And later he was reduced to being a potato farm. The world didn't know about their near destruction of Earth until 1998. When retired commander, Soviet missile defense uh, specialist Yuri Wotinstep published his memoir and mentioned this incident in that book, which he made public. Then he went on to receive awards twice from the world citizen of the United States. I don't know why it is. He got a resident peace prize from Germany. He was also posthumously honored Future of Life Award and was felicitated by former UN Secretary General Ban Ki Moon. Although credited for saving the world, he always maintained that he was just doing his job. So today, if you are alive, if you want to value your very presence on this earth, I would say not just keep thinking about Petrov, just spend one second of your life to think about what this man did. It was his belief in himself, his gut feeling that probably saved the entire earth. Or to you, Toastmaster.
Thank you, Toastmaster Abhay. We'll take a 30 seconds pause and write down the feedback for the speaker. Let us have a timer's report now. Toastmaster Shantala and Toastmaster Sakshi, can you give us exact timings for the speaker? Uh, the first speaker took uh, two minutes fifty-two seconds, so which is less than the minimum of uh, four minutes. Then the second speaker took uh, six minutes fifty-four seconds, so qualifies. Third speaker took 5 minutes 43 seconds, so again qualifies. The fourth speaker took 10 minutes 30 seconds, so again now. Two of the So, Toastmaster Akash and Toastmaster Priyanka are qualified. Let us cast our votes for the best speaker now. I would now like to announce a five minutes break. Thank you. 
Welcome back everyone to the second phase of the meeting. Now it's time for the evaluations. The four evaluators will give the written and oral feedback to the speaker at the end of the meeting. But they will also give some feedback in two to three minutes here. The timing sequence is green at two minutes. Yellow at 2.5 minutes and red at 3 minutes. The buzzer will sound at 3 and half minutes. The first speech by Toastmaster Drew will be evaluated by someone who is a BTEC graduate. He loves reading about latest technology and Indian economy. Let us welcome Toastmaster Shvetak Sinha. Thank you. Hi, T. Am I audible and visible? Hello. Yeah, yeah. We are making you visible this way. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. Hi. Good evening, Mr. President, fellow Toastmasters, Toastmaster of the day, and dear guests. Today, I'll be evaluating the icebreaker speech of Toastmaster Throw. So congrats, congratulations Throw for completing your icebreaker speech. That is a starting milestone for your journey here at Toastmasters. So congratulations for that. And I have a very firm conviction that you have done it perfectly. The level of confidence that you have shown while you're delivering the speech is really commendable and you have really ablaze my mind. You have points related to your life events that involves sporting events, your injuries, which is of course very challenging to hear from our perspective and definitely motivational. Your thoughts are of course very in line you, uh, of your memory and you have already prepared your speech before delivering it. But as of course, there are some recommendations which is of course required and it is, it is a part of the evaluation. Ideally, I think your overall speech is a good icebreaker, but you're, you can definitely improve your thought alignment or the story. Be it starting with your introduction, like what is uh, telling us about yourself, and then continuing it with the life events, like the sporting events that you have done, the national sporting events, and then shifting it to the story where you have suffered some injuries, and then shifting your story to what is your current business and what is your current expectations that you have from Toastmasters and the team. So I think this is a very small recommendation, but it will definitely improve your thought process and it will definitely improve the story building. So I think it's very minimal, but it is, of course, your overall thanks for your speech and looking forward to having you in the agenda. And congratulations again for your icebreaker speech. Thank you. And over to you, Toastmaster of the day. Thank you, Toastmaster Shweta. The second speech by Toastmaster Akash will be evaluated by someone who is a senior consultant with an internal audit firm. He likes traveling, arts, and sports. Let us welcome Toastmaster Kavalya. <laughs> Am I audible and visible to the online world? Yes. Yes, sir. You are audible. Yes, sir. You can go ahead. Honorable President, fellow Toastmasters and guests, a very good evening. Today, my target speaker, Toastmaster Akash, delivered a speech. The objective of the speech was writing a speech with a purpose few thoughts about the speech. I think he excelled at writing a speech with purpose. The things I loved about this speech were, this speech was his second speech overall in his Toastmasters journey and first speech in the physical environment. 
despite of being his first speech in the physical environment i could not find any signs of nerves so kudos to you i thought the speech was well prepared there were some very good gestures at display as well as some good body language that was showcased during your speech especially i liked the gesture of spock which you used uh, i'm still attempting to do that uh, maybe this is the one yeah so kudos to you in doing that i think you excelled really well in doing that a few recommendations from my side so the speech was good overall it was structurally balanced i thought the eye contact would have been better so while you were giving speech you were looking at the ball in front of you but i thought the eye contact with the audience was a little lacking so you could have targeted audience is your target uh, people so you could have looked at their eyes and you could have delivered your speech you ended your speech with extinction so first of all you started your speech by giving some concepts about having a world with no boundaries and uh, then mentioning that there should be no password passports or visas and people should be uh, free to travel without any boundaries and you uh, ended your speech with an extinction so i thought that there was a logically disconnect as far as my opinion is concerned perhaps you could have ended your speech on a positive note rather than ending it on a note of extinction but overall i thought it was a great speech you uh, spoke on a thinking topic you did some research behind that topic which was great and i also thought that i also saw that during the break there were a few toast masters here who were discussing about your speech and giving you recommendations so i think overall it was a great speech and i wish you all the best for your future in toast masters thank you and over to the toast masters Thank you, Toastmaster Premilla. The third speech was given by Toastmaster Priyanka, which will be evaluated by a person who is currently working as a digital marketing associate. She likes to explore new places, meet new people. Let us welcome Toastmaster Kushali. Mr President Toastmaster of the day fellow toastmasters and dear guests good evening to all of you good evening today toastmaster priyanka delivered her speech about eq so some she started with question which made her speech very interesting and by that you know i feel very much connected with that speech and i feel that happened with everyone so uh, that that is very nice thing to do then you Shared, she shared her uh, tricks and experiences of her own life, which is something I feel is a very good thing to add, which made her also, you know, very much involved while speaking throughout the speech. Then the speed uh, with which she was speaking is very perfect. She knows where to take pauses and where to stop, and the confidence le level by which she was she was speaking was very high. So I think that is also a very good thing. A few recommendations from my side is. So you you have ended your speech uh, within five minutes, I think five minutes to forty three seconds. So you could you could have used that time to add more content in your speech. So you explain five. Uh, you talk about five points in the beginning of that speech, and but you explain just two of them. So you could have explained five all those five points by just briefly. Uh, and you have talked about the IQ in your speech. You have taken the reference of it. so you could have talked a little bit about that also which uh, which made it even more interesting which made it even more interesting so i feel that with the time limit you had in your hands you could have added some more content you could have taken the examples of the people who have with the help of eq reached at some level or uh, got success so these are few recommendations apart from this i feel that it is a it was a very nice attempt so all the best Thank you. Thank you, Toastmaster Kishani. A fourth speech was given by Toastmaster Rabin, which will be evaluated by a person who is a writer and a financial professional. She is a passionate entrepreneur and a Bharatnatyam dancer. 
Let us welcome Toastmaster Lakshmi Nair. Thank you, Toastmaster of the day. I cannot see the timer. Am I audible? Yes. Huh, now I can see. Now I can see. All right. Uh, timer, we can start. I can see the green light already. Thank you. Toastmaster Rabin today spoke about the man who saved the world, Stanislav Petrov. And when he spoke, I knew that he was giving his level three third project of his third path. And I also knew that I was seeing the beautiful evolution of a great speaker. It is said that people usually forget what you told them but they never forget how you made them feel. And Toastmaster Rabin, today, I'm not going to ever forget how you made me feel with that compelling story of yours. When you began your speech with the question, you made me curious. And then you went into a descriptive storytelling mood. You started with a prelude and went ahead. And I settled down into the mood of listening to an interesting real life story, feeling all the tension and feeling all the curiosity to know what happened next. I would say that you totally are successful in sending across the message you wanted to the audience. You are a very accomplished speaker. Therefore, I think I will let you know the recommendations that I have for you, which might help you to climb the next level. First of all, I felt there were too much of information in the PPT that you shared. So what happened was I was constantly looking into the PPT and trying to listen to what you were saying. So I was feeling a bit confused going forth, back, back and forth between you and the PPT. So maybe next time you can, you can Bring, it, bring down the content in the PPT a little bit and maybe speak more. Secondly, this time around, I somehow felt that you did not have too much of connect with the audience. The connect with the audience was low because you were constantly looking down into the notes probably and that made the overall energy a little low from your side. And last, I think you had to work a little bit on the time management when it came to this project because maybe because you went up to 10 minutes, you also had an abrupt ending. Other than that, the way you included those comic strips in the uh, PPT and also cited the sources, I liked all of them and it added to the effect that you, uh, you brought forth as you narrated the story. And the speech was very well organized. You, it was chronologically organized. And uh, it was a great attempt from your side because you were trying something very different this time. Uh, all the best for the upcoming speeches. Over to you, Toastmaster of the day. Thank you, Toastmaster Lakshmi. We will now have timer's report. Toastmaster Shantala, can you please tell us who qualifies for the best evaluator? Uh, only uh, evaluator uh, uh, three. She took one minute fifty three seconds. Everybody else qualifies. Uh, the first evaluator took two minutes seven seconds. Just say who qualifies and who doesn't. Okay, the only person who didn't qualify is uh, the third evaluator. One to three are one to four are one. So four. Yeah. Uh, Toastmaster uh, Shweta, Toastmaster Kevalya, and Toastmaster Lakshmi are qualified. Thank you, Toastmaster Shantala. 
Now we will vote for best evaluator. Now let's test our ability to think fast and speak impromptu in the table topic session. The table topic master is a Toastmaster since last nine years. He is an IT professional working with Japanese IT company in Pune. He is interested in personal finance and public speaking. Let us welcome distinguished Toastmaster Naga Pan. President, Toastmaster of the day. Am I audible to the online people? Am I audible, visible? Yes. Yes, sir. You can go ahead. Fellow Toastmasters and guests in this meeting as well as those who are at online. Good evening to all of you. Good evening. Good evening. Today, I am the table topics master. So what is table topics? Especially for the guest. This is an impromptu speaking session where I may call some of you here, including guests, but due to our club's process, we will be calling those who are dressed formally here. And we may call some of you here and we will give you a topic in which you should speak impromptu, that is immediately. Maybe you can think for a few seconds and then you should start speaking about that. And why we have that? We want all of you to think. In the prepared speech, the speakers prepare and come here and give the speech. Impromptu is something we want to see how people can think immediately and speak about that. You may not be able to speak all the facts, but still we want to see how much you are prepared and how much you can do that. So that is the idea behind that. And what is the timing for this? The timing is one to two minutes. So when I say that, one minute, at the end of one minute, the timer will show the green card. You can see the green card from here. At 1 minute 30 seconds, you will see the yellow. And at 2 minutes, you will see the buzzer. And there is a 30 seconds of grace period. Once when that is over, you will see the, you will get the buzzer at 2 minutes 30 seconds. That is, you need to speak for a minimum of 1 minute, maximum of 2 minutes 30 seconds to qualify for the voting of the best table topic speaker. Is this clear, especially to the guest? Uh, I think you mentioned buzzer at two red card at two and buzzer at two thirty. Buzzer at two at two minutes thirty seconds. Red at two minutes. Buzzer at two minutes thirty seconds. <laughs> so to give an example or to, to set this easier for the guest, I would like to call a toastmaster. Maybe I want to call someone who recently joined with us and I want to call him today, Toastmaster Shaker. topic for you is if you could go back in time and live your younger day once again, which day would you like to choose and why? Which day would you like to choose and why? Let me repeat. If you could go back in time and live your younger day once again, which day would you like to choose and why? Thank you very much. Uh, good evening, uh, President. Uh, Toastmaster of the day and fellow Toastmasters and guests. Uh, the topic which has been given to me is, if I were to go back in my younger days, uh, which day would I choose and why would I choose it? So uh, I would like to uh, say that, you know, in my younger days, uh, I used to write <coughs> columns in, in, uh, in newspapers and I was very fond of, you know, sort of uh, reading current affairs, reading about economics, Although I'm not uh, formally qualified in economics, but uh, somehow I had developed liking for economics. And uh, you know, I used to write columns on public policy, economics, 
you know those kind of things now if i were to uh, and uh, unfortunately uh, i didn't pursue that and there was a reason as a, as a young lad uh, i was uh, you know like many of us i was after you know having a, a, a good comfortable life and i didn't pursue that career any further but if i were to get another opportunity to go back in time i would certainly want to pursue that as a, as a as a career because that you know economics and public policy comes to me you know uh, inherently uh, that, that's something you know that interests me that uh, sort of you know comes to me very very naturally so uh, you know in, in terms of uh, going back to going back in time i would certainly want to go back in time uh, and, and pursue that that also gives me an opportunity to sort of you know uh, do some some uh, sort of you know social awareness kind of stuff uh, with my fellow citizens uh, in india uh, so that's uh, something that i would definitely want to pursue if i go back in time thank you very much I hope the table topics, how to speak in table topics, is clear to the guest. So let me start calling some guests. So I would like to call the guest, Devardo Sarkar. Sometimes we may have some habits which we want to change. So what is one habit which you want to call it a day? What is one habit which you want to call it a day? Which you want to stop, you don't want to practice something. Uh, right. Hello, people. I'm the Bargo. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm still quite young, so like, you know, I have a ton of bad habits. Uh, but like, if I were to point out in particular, I'd say staying up too late. So there have been like multiple instances where I'm like, uh, my, my colleagues are done right. So I'm waking up at 9.45, I'm like, oh my God, I've got an exam in like 15. Yeah, I gotta get ready, I gotta take a bath, I gotta brush my teeth and everything. So I'm definitely being uh, punctual sure uh, Other than that, I mean, there have been certain qualities that uh, I've improved upon. For example, I'm a very, very messy person. Uh, the last uh, Toastmasters meeting, I came in like informal uh, uniform and I was like, well, guided by certain uh, members to wear proper attire. So uh, for that, now I arrange everything on my personal calendar to improve upon that section. Uh, but <coughs> then again, we're all humans, right? We're going to have mistakes, we're going to have bad habits. Uh, so what I think is important is that we take hold of these things and try and mitigate them. Don't try and uh, squash them. Okay, don't try and set them on the legs because that'll, uh, that'll, that defines who you are as a person. Okay. The little mistakes, the little mishaps that happen in your life, they are the things that shape you and uh, take uh, these habits, these uh, in this constituents like, uh, in a light fashion and you know, enjoy life. Thank you. And as a process here of practice, whenever you come here, I will hand over the stage to you by doing a handshake. And whenever you go back or whenever you complete, you again hand over the stage to me. This is a simple uh, process of the habit you can do in Toastmaster. Next, I would like to call guest Partika. What motivates you? Topic two is what motivates you? Good evening, everyone present here. So the topic that is given to me is what motivates you. So uh, I would like to say uh, my father who motivates me. The uh, simple policies of life that he follows motivates me, like waking up on time, disciplined life, uh, doing like worshiping, uh, going to temple daily and going to the shop on time, doing all the duties, and spending time with family. Uh, I think it is a balanced life, uh, work and family. So that is the thing that motivates me the most. And one more thing I would like to add, uh, he is uh, motivated because I see him falling, but again, he 
climbs a ladder and he like he is a self motivator so that thing i like nobody is there to motivate you again so you can be your own motivator so that is why he is my motivator color thank you is someone with the name type hopefully come please come here the topic for you is did you celebrate holi yesterday how was the holi celebration yesterday <laughs> so uh good evening everyone uh, uh my topic is how i celebrate holi last day so uh i wake up yesterday morning at 9:30 my sister come with uh, my sister come i, I was sleeping at uh, on the bed but she uh, <laughs> uh she has a bucket in her hand and she throw it on my uh, on me <laughs> i was like what is this <laughs> so it was a great starting and uh, i played with everyone in my home uh, so thank you Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Today there was a speech on emotional intelligence. Very clear at the point of time. Okay. So tell me, what is emotional intelligence and how do you manage it? With whatever the question, we can take off the mask for the camera. Mr. President, postmasters and guests, I am Rashmi Chaturvedi, and uh, today what I learned about emotional intelligence is that it is totally different from in uh, IQ. Uh, there are people who uh, who are empathetic and um, see what uh, other people are going through, and I think it is very important to learn that to survive in the uh, society. because we cannot impose our views on others and also um, i think it is a basic skill which should be um, um, i think it is a basic skill to have and um, uh, to understand what the other person is going through uh, uh, i'm sorry <laughs> so according to me whoever can can understand uh, the ba- uh, the basic emotions <laughs> i think you all have good iq and can understand what i'm going through right now <laughs> so thank you so much just introduce yourself what do you do and how did you come to know about this matter okay, i am actually to today and i'm a um, student and pursuing pg in agricultural microbiology and um, i came uh, to know about post masters through one of my friends Thank you so much. Do we have someone online? Any guests online meetings? Dutkash, Dutkash, okay. Dutkash, turn your camera on, please. And Nandan Bhojraj, turn it there. Okay. Dutkash. Okay. Dutkash. Please tell why do you want to join Cross Masters? Mukhtar, please tell why do you want to join Cross Masters? Okay. Uh, thank you, everyone. It's it's been uh, you know really nice uh, joining the session. Even though it is online, I'll try to uh, join it next week uh, in your offline way. So my name is Utkarsh. I'm a just a quick introduction about myself. My name is Utkarsh. I am a business analyst at Geo Haptic. and uh, i i'm uh, i mean uh, geo haptic is a company that is based out of mumbai so now my topic for uh, sorry my topic for today is why do i want to join uh, toastmasters toastmasters so i ca- came to know about toastmasters back in 2018 when i was still in my um, uh, undergrad of engineering uh, that was the first time i'd ever heard about it but i never got around to uh, but i never got around to actually you know inquiring more about it and see how it can Uh, how it works, how it can help me in general. 
and uh, up until recently one of my colleagues uh, you know mentioned something about toastmasters so he is a member of toastmasters mumbai and that is when it struck me that this is this is a place that uh, you know really really helps you grow when it comes to uh, your public speaking skills or or your confidence in general right and that was my main motivation uh, around joining toastmasters additionally over the past couple of years uh, human interaction has you know really turned online right and everyone has been over the past couple of years has been craving that uh, connect with someone trying to meet new people etc so i think toastmasters in general provided a really good platform uh, to actually do something like this and that is why i i decided to explore and this is once again my very first time that i'm attending this uh, event thank you I think we have Toastmasters and then online. So, you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Yes. So, the topic for you is in case if government of India wants you to join the discussion between Russia and Ukraine, what is your one advice or what do you want to suggest to them? How to resolve the current issue? Let me repeat. Can you repeat? If, if you want, if government of India asks you to join in the discussion, between russia and ukraine what is your one advice or how do you want, what do you want to suggest so that they can solve the problem is this clear yes thank you uh, respected president uh, toastmaster of the day uh, toastmasters and guests uh, it's my privilege to be here today in the very fantastic meeting which is going on and my topic is what i should say if the government of india wants me to have a discussion or have a, a advice Ukraine and Russia. It's definitely a very difficult and critical topic. So in fact, all the world must be thinking about this problem. And I think they are breaking their heads, including the president of America and Putin also must be thinking what should be done because it's a big jam. And whenever there is a big jam, uh, it is said that experts give some opinions. And it is always said that when all experts agree, mostly all of them are wrong. Today, when we are at this particular uh, position of a jam and uh, a brink of world war as well, um, my advice to the warring nations, that is Ukraine and Russia, will be to exercise restraint, whatever differences they may be having, they can definitely sit and talk talk is better than war war, it is said. So rather than creating such a big problem and such a massacre of people which is happening, they should sit together and then resolve the differences in a neutral ground. Maybe they can come to India, which is a neutral ground and a, a prime minister which is respected like Narendra Modi and uh, in their discussions, they will be able to come together with certain conclusions, which will be win-win for them, as well as win-win for all the all the world, as well as win-win for the people who are stuck there, which is a very, very vital and important decision. Thank you very much, Toastmaster of the Day. Thank you, Toastmaster. I think we are... Running short of time, we have more time for more topics. I think how much how we are doing on time. So we are doing. Yeah, I think so, six, uh, six thirty one is when it has to stop. Right? Okay, 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 okay. I think that we are with the time. So let's have the voting for the best table topic speaker. So I would like to know from the timer if all of them have qualified. Can we consider 55 seconds? No, 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 right? So in that case, uh, I will tell you the list of speakers. Uh, Vartika, okay. uh, then uh, 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 Harshivardhan, uh, both of them don't qualify. Okay, okay. Okay, so then those who qualify are Toastmaster Shekhar and uh, Dibargo Sarkar and Vaishnavi, Udkar and Toastmaster and then. I request all of you to take out that portion of the table topics speaker, Toastmaster Shaker, guest 
Debarbo Sakar, guest Vaishnavi, guest Uttar, and Toastmaster Mandan. You can write one of these names, any one name, including guest, everyone can vote. Those who are online can use the voting in the online. And with that, I think a top line and uh, pages collecting the ballots is given to you. With this, I complete the table topic session. I would like to hand it over to the Toastmaster of the day for the next set of questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, distinguished Toastmaster Anup and Sir, for wonderfully carrying out the table topic session. Now it's time for the language evaluator to come forward and give her comments. Let us welcome Toastmaster Tamanna. Good evening once again. The good usages were the Satsa user words superficial, Toastmaster Drove used negotiation, persuasive skills, Toastmaster Archive used earthling, comprehend, fragment, propose, surplus, sustain, includes all inclusive, horrific, agony, they stand goods, progeny. Galaxy extension. Toastmaster Priyanka used figured, proved, empathy, motivations, earth shaking, out of the blue, EQs, IQs, well being. Toastmaster Rabin used prelude, loggerheads, alliances, inevitable, allies, catastrophic, impending, critical, protocol, skeptical, conflicting, irreversible, bugs, mem memoir. Posthumously, Toastmaster Shwetab used milestone commendable. Toastmaster Kevale used gestures and spark. Toastmaster Lakshmi used time the next ladder cited chronological order. Toastmaster Shekhar used lad and inherently. Dibakar used the word squash. Vartika used self motivation motivator and rational use empathetic. I couldn't find any back, not so good usages. People who used word of the day were Shweta, Shweta used the word ablaze, and idiom of the day was used by Toastmaster Akash and BTN Nagapan sir. Let's applaud for the people who used word of the day and phrase of the day. Thank you, Toastmaster Tamanna. Now we will have an our counter report. Let us welcome Toastmaster Nidhi. Thank you, Toastmaster of the day. Am I visible and audible? Yes. yes you Good evening, Mr. President, fellow Toastmasters and dear guests. We often find ourselves using crutch words or fillers like uh, you know, or meaning, meaningless sounds like er uh, when we are searching for the right word to say. Such crutch words distract from our speech and give the impression that we are not well prepared. Instead, just try pausing for a moment while you straighten out your thoughts. This will help to reduce our reliance on those words and achieve clear and eloquent speech. I'll now be presenting my report. Speaker one, Toastmaster Dhruv used five plus hours and a repeated usage of word and. Speaker two, Toastmaster Akash had one hour. Speaker three, Toastmaster Priyanka used one hour. Speaker four, Toastmaster Rabin used one hour in his speech. Evaluator, evaluator two, Toastmaster Kaivalya used two hours. Evaluator three, Toastmaster Khushali used five hours. Toastmaster of the day Ankita used two hours. Toastmaster timer Shanthala used five hours. 
Toastmaster Shekhar used five plus hours. Guest Debarga used four hours. Guest Vartika used five hours. Guest Harshvardhan used four hours. Guest Vaishnavi used five plus hours. Guest Utkarsh used five hours. Toastmaster Nandan sir used two hours. Toastmaster Soham Lakshmi, Distinguished Toastmaster Prasad sir, Distinguished Toastmaster Nagapan sir, Toastmaster Shweta and Toastmaster Tamanna are flawless speakers in today's meeting. Let us all have a round of applause for them. This I conclude my report and hand over the stage to the Toastmaster of the day. Thank you, Toastmaster Nidhi. Someone was observing the proceedings of the entire meeting. He will now give his comments. Let us welcome Toastmaster Tej to present his general evaluation. Good evening, Mr. President, Toastmasters of the day, fellow Toastmasters and dear guests. Good evening. The first speaker was the Sergeant at Arms. The Sergeant at Arms started the meeting on time. Um, since he was virtual, I took up the responsibility of being the in-person SA. So the online SA read the club mission and the in-person essay allowed the people to come inside and, and exit the uh, venue when no one was speaking at that time. And the in-person essay distributed the ballots and agenda before the meeting started. The president came over here and in, in his presidential address noted down the uh, changes that are going to happen in our club and explain these changes to each and every one over here. And he didn't make it a point to just make a, tell it to the members only. He made the guests also involved in these changes. And it, the address was warm and welcoming. Now uh, the time, both the timers meticulously showed the cards in physically and virtually. They meticulously kept a track of the timings. The cards were clearly raised on time so, so that each one of us could see the timing cards. The cards were held up for 30 seconds at least. The now we move on to the language evaluator. The word of the day and medium of the day were easy to use. So, and I think in our meeting, most of the, some of the people used the word of the day and item of the day. The, the audience was also called upon uh, to use the word of the day and item of the day. And he also explained the word of the day and item of the day with suitable examples. And also the thumbs up rule was clearly explained to each one of us. You have Your report was Chris and it was in the CRC approach. CR, for the benefit of the guest, CRC means commendation, recommendation, and commendations. The, your report includes the good usage, the not so good usage, and you also noted down the speakers who use the word of the day and medium of the day. And one more thing that you did was that you gave a round of applause to the speakers that use the word of the day and medium of the day. Now to the speech evaluators. All the speech evaluators use the CRC approach. The commendations and recommendations were appropriate to the to each and every speaker. The only recommendation that I would give to this to the evaluator three is that you observe the speech more and come up with more re recommendations and commendations. You can concentrate on the content of the speech. You can also check how the speech was delivered and how was the flow of the speech and you can you can easily cross the two minutes for the speech evaluator to the table topic master the purpose of the role was explained very well you had some interesting topics and you came up 
with the topic out of the blue when one according to one of the speech titles like about eq which is emotional intelligence um, the timing sequence was properly explained to each one of us and the members and guests were invited to participate and it had a particular order to the our counter the purpose of the role was was explained every crutch and filler word was carefully noted your report was crisp and helpful and you also gave a round of applause to the speakers that of flawless now to the host of the meeting you, you had a interesting concept of a speaker turn the agenda was rolled on time the meeting rules and agenda was also quite well explained you use the poets approach which is p is for purpose o is for the objectives of the speech t is so e is for the name of the evaluator t is the time p is also the speech title and s is for the speaker's introduction a good overall job as it was your first and will be slow uh, the meeting was lively and enjoyable and it was full of energy over to you thank you toastmaster dej now it's the moment of glory for some of us let us invite our president to give away the certificates for the best speakers tonight and give his closing address we are in time just a quick vote on best role player of the day and best auxiliary role player of the day the best role player of the day we have three persons in that category that we will have launched that poll online when i declare we have toast master of the day that is ankita table topic master which is nagappan and general evaluator tej so please vote amongst three of these for the best role player launch poll Jamie Simpson's best score player. Yeah, I've created all this. Launched. Closing. Because it's seen already. Okay. So, Rabin, uh, sorry, Page, please collect the ballots. and soon we'll also vote for the best auxiliary role player which is between the sergeant at arms which is sohan kulkarni timer which is shantala here and sachi online together our counter which is nidhi rajendra and language evaluator which is tamanna so these four will be qualified in under that category I'm a roller qualified. Right? Uh, actually, I found that uh, uh, Tamanna took uh, two minutes. It has to be three to four. Right? Yeah. She took okay, two minutes. Yeah. Did collect my ballots as well? Yes. And liaise with Rabin about the results. Collaborate together and find out. Yes. Collect mine, please, so that I can do something for other discussions. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So while Tej is collecting votes and those are being counted, I would like to have some feedback from our guests who are present here. we have first timers in vartika so maybe vartika you can start share with us how you came to know about postmasters and 
overall about the meeting did you like this so again good evening everyone uh, i came to hear about this person from my friend who inquired if i have online he is not here yogesh no no he joined next time okay and i feel it will definitely build up my confidence it will be build up my public speaking skills and it will it will be making me more better communicator it is really useful uh, mm. in that scenario thank you and what do you do vartika so i am uh, pursuing a mba from uh, iit pune from iit pune i mean i mean yes. and you stay around here somewhere near by so i stay for two i don't okay. not for far Okay, so you enjoyed the meeting. You understood what Toastmaster is, and you feel you will benefit by this. Yes, sir. Okay, so we look forward to you joining us soon. Then we have Vaishnavi Jyotode. Is that the correct pronunciation? Yeah. Good evening, everyone. I am Vaishnavi Jyotode. I am from Kerala. 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 I am So I think it will be a good environment. And do you stay around here? Yes, near. Okay, nearby. Then we have Harsh Patel, who is here second time in a row. What's your last name, Harsh Patel? Gupta. Gupta. So please share your feedback. Hello, everyone. I am Shreya. I am the first on the stage. Hmm. It was. So I was really nervous, but. It's okay for the first time, and uh, so the arrangement about the feedback. The arrangement was good for the last time, and uh, so can we uh, uh, give a feedback? Because the picture was really good. Yeah, so okay. we found that as a challenge today somehow. I apologize for that. The so speakers didn't work today. Both the speakers. We tried it on his computer as well as mine. It didn't work. The speaker is huh? the speaker is the problem, not the last. Oh, okay. who is that? Hmm? Okay, on my computer, please go. Okay. Okay. So you have attended two meetings now. You have understood what this must be. Yes, sir. Have you liked this? Yes, sir. Are you about ready? Yes, sir. Okay. So you can join us as a member. Uh, when would you join? Uh, so now I can join, but I have to talk to my father. Sorry. Talk to my father. I will talk to my father about the. Oh, is it Pune? Yes. Uh, you live in Pune. Oh, yes. Where? So, Arundhati. Arundhati. So she also comes from Arundhati. So you can share a ride or whatever like, is that called? Okay. Thank you. Then we have what's your name again? Harsh. Harsh Gargis. Harsh Vardhan and Harsh. Okay. Harsh Gargis. 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 B H A D G Dharge. So good evening everyone. So this is my second uh, meeting of course master in person. So everything was smooth from the last time. Though we have facing some technical issues, but our voices were very good enough to reach the organ audience also. So sitting in the and everything seems to be nice now. So you have attended two meetings as well now. So what's your decision yeah. about joining those masters? Yeah, uh, today. <laughs> okay, today I got. By the first month. Okay, absolutely. That is what we always preach. Yeah. Abhi itha direct lokal na hain to aaj baishe lagne karna kya? Some people who protest about that they say why you are asking such a question directly. It is as good as asking somebody will you marry me today? But those masters is a non profit organization so we don't mind asking such questions then we have uh, this gentleman here what's your name chandan chandan please share your feedback and then quickly uh, i felt really nice being here um, i am looking forward to uh, participating in in person meeting i appreciate this club has started uh, hybrid meetings so quickly uh, this gives us opportunity to feel uh, the, the real Stage and uh, public speaking, and uh, yeah, this has been great experience. I'm looking forward to participating in further. Are you staying around here? Uh, yeah, I stay uh, in Nandes. Nandes, not too far. And what do you do? Uh, I'm a cybersecurity professional. Okay, 
So good. We have, we have a cyber security professional on us today. So we can take some guidance from you about some issues. Yeah. Then we have Debar Go here, who has been here second time. And what's your feedback, Debar? Uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, obviously, everything was fantastically managed. Nothing else. Everything fantastic. You have been here twice now. So what's your decision? Uh, I. Uh, I I probably will be leaving because uh, I, I mean, the main reason to join Toastmasters was so that I can as a leader was like to talk to people like one on one. But he, this is more like a public speaking thing, yeah. which is something I feel that does not uh, suit my needs. Okay. Good okay. evening, all. Uh, this was the second uh, session of my Toastmasters journey. So I'm a guest and I'll be taking my uh, uh, membership today itself. Mm -hmm. And overall, this was a very good experience for me. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot to learn. Thank you. Thank you. Then we have a uh, visiting those master Shantala. Yes. Please share your feedback. Yeah, I found it was really an excellent uh, Just leave it here. Just uh, meeting. Excellent. This is the second time, of course, like you're ever yeah. attending. Both the times I have really been uh, like uh, impressed very much and so i think uh, uh, as a club president of Rico toastmasters Rendevu, we have a long way to go it, especially you know my the thing i love for participating in the toastmasters but here i don't get the courage to even try to raise my hand because i can see that we need to uh, go a long way till we can uh, reach this sort of a uh, standpoint where we can say we are somewhere so it's really a very nice experience. Your club continues to meet only online, is it? Till now, yes. Okay, you have tried offline meeting. No, all. because we are having two of us who are in Pune. Oh. And everybody is still in their in other place. Uh -huh. Okay, give me a minute to just say to just write the names here. You can take this back. Higher. Meanwhile, there is an announcement about membership dues renewal. I would request PTM Nagapan to come forward and talk about that. Good evening, everyone. Once again, this is for the membership renewal for the existing Toastmaster who has done the payment until March 2022. I think now it's time to do the renewal for April to September term. And we have introduced the early bird scheme for those who want to do the renewal. And today, the last line for the, the last one of the early bird is going to end today. And in case if you want to do the renewal, you can do at a monthly rate of 675 till midnight today. From tomorrow onward, the regular pricing of 700 rupees will be applicable. So I would like to remind those who have not done the pricing. I could see a couple of few members here also. We all can do the renewal. Maybe once the meeting is over, you can discuss with me. I will explain more about how we play both. And especially those at online and those who have not done the renewal yet, please avail the early bird scheme before midnight today. Thank you and over to us. Thank you. By the way, just to clarify, you can be traveling out, you can be going to another country or another city for education. You can still join a member here and attend meetings there. So that is perfectly fine. So continue your membership here and whenever you shift your town, you know, change your university or city, that is perfectly fine. Uh, Kushali over here is going back to her hometown for two months and then she will probably join I am Indore or Kodikod or Lucknow or Bangalore, Calcutta, Ahmedabad, some one of these. So she will still continue membership there, but she can attend meetings online while she is in another town. And if she continues to stay in Pune, she can of course attend meetings here. Then we have uh, one another is Lakshmi there. Can we put spotlight on her, please? Lakshmi, please turn your video on. Hi. Put your put. I'm putting you on spotlight here. Okay, Lakshmi recently completed Distinguished Toastmaster title. Let's applaud and give us a Thank you. Can somebody show the camera to her so that she sees that you all are standing and doing our signing position? Uh, 
Thank you. Thank you so much. Now we can set the camera back again. You know. So we look forward to you visiting Pune and collecting your pending ribbons, Lakshmi. I'm coming on seventh, so hopefully I'll meet all. Seventh, okay, okay. So you attend the meeting in person as well that time. I have a program on Saturday, so probably okay. I might not be able to come for the meeting. But okay. I would definitely like to see you all. So I'll call you yeah, once I'm there. Yeah. We would love to have a treat by you. Of course. <laughs> <For your linear>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> okay. Then we have the ribbons for today. The best speaker for today goes to Akash Bojaraj. <laughs> Can somebody please click photos? Uh, are you seen in the camera? Both, both the cameras? Okay. Like this? Yes. Okay. See. The best evaluator goes to Lakshmi Nair, which is online, but we will still upload for you. Yeah, the best table topic speaker for today again goes to Shekhar Tankiwale. The best role player auxiliary goes to our counter Nidhi Rajuttar. She is online partner for and the best role player for the main role goes to Toastmaster Ankita Dev. Thank you. Just a couple of minutes, we have some items to vote for. One is, as I mentioned earlier, that we have some funds from the earlier years and we are spending more than we earn currently. At one time, we had 80 to 100 members, so we have collected more surplus of, we collect $7.5 as tools passes with international dues, plus about 100 rupees extra on top of that. And the dollar has been going up, we have still not revised the fees, we still keep it at 700 rupees. But we spend more than 100 rupees per month per member. The rent here alone is 3,000 plus, and the cost of a meeting goes to four to 5,000 rupees altogether. So because of that, we have to either spend from the past, whatever we have collected earlier, or we have to increase dues. Okay, so I would like to have opinions from some members. What should we do? Shall we spend from the past? We have funds, so we don't have to worry about that. We'll have to spend from the past. Okay, with everyone. Is there anyone who opposes yeah. that? Online folks. Online folks, uh, if you agree to that, you can show a thumbs up. Or rather, if you disagree, speak up. Eventually, we might have to increase fees once we exhaust this buffer of about yeah. 80 or 1000 rupees. So we'll have to increase fees from 700 to 800 or 900 rupees. We might do that even next month for new joinees. But for those who have paid, the amount stays like that till the next renewal, which is September. Okay. So if no objections, I carry this motion. is passed. The other motion is to allow Rabin Shetty to give back-to-back -back speeches every week till 15th April, and then he will play the roles after that for the next one and a half months or so, so that he can complete his award, which will be beneficial to the club. The club requires two persons to complete certain titles by 15th April. I'm going to complete it anyway, and he is the second guy who will have to complete it. If there is anyone else who can give 15 speeches between now and 15th April, you are welcome to do that as well. So Lakshmi also is completed. But she had not logged in the first speech here. Okay. okay, so if no objections, this motion will pass. Yes. With that, we have come to the end of the meeting. Is there anyone who has any comment, feedback, idea to be shared, anything to be talked about? 
If not, we will end the meeting. But we have arranged some fellowship for you. These are fruits. Last time we had guava and figs. This time we have banana, strawberry, and chipoos. So the fellowship will be served outside. But the guests who are joined here for the first time today, please meet distinguished Toastmaster Nagapan, who will brief you about Toastmasters for a few minutes, maybe five minutes or so. We will not finish the fruits by then, don't worry. And then join us for having the fellowship of fruits. Okay. Before we end, all of you should please come forward so that we can click a good photo and send it on the social media afterwards. So please take out your mask when you come here, only for the sake of photos. Let your beautiful smile be seen by all. The meeting is adjourned, by the way. Requesting all the Zoom participants to open their video as well. So I'll click. Uh, uh, the gallery mode so that they also can join in the room. Okay, sorry, we are closing the meeting. You are not going to be seen in the photo anyway. Thank you. Kailash, take a photo there. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I have already taken the photo. Okay. And we'll click a photo here. Bye bye, everyone online. End the video. It's okay. Then we'll stand.